In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a portfolio using MediaGrid, similar to this one. Um, as you can see, we have several images with nice overlays. We can sort them based on type. When we click on them, they open um, in a nice light box. We can have item attributes like the photographer and the location. We can scroll through. And I'll also show you how to make a slideshow within the gallery. So that was one image, this one, that opens into a slideshow. This is kind of a long video, so I apologize for that. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I covered things fairly in depth because I've gotten a lot of questions about this plugin. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to use it. So let's go ahead and make a portfolio um, using MediaGrid. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and go to my dashboard and I've already installed MediaGrid. Um, it's pretty simple to do. Um, if you don't know how to install a plugin by uploading it, I have a video on that as well. Um, but I've already installed it, so here it is on the left hand side. Um, I've tweaked the settings a tiny bit, but I've mostly left them okay. I'm just going to go through them real quick to show you kind of where things are. In the grid layout, you may or may not want to change the spacing in between the images. Um, I'm going to leave it at five pixels, but I did remove the border. Um, you can just drag the border to whatever size you want it to be, and you can choose whether you want rounded corners or not. For the most part, that's about all I change um, on most of them. Um, I've installed this on a couple different websites and I do love this plugin, um, but it looks pretty great right out of the box, but you do have options for changing things if you want to. You can also change how things are filtered. So for example, when you click on the lifestyle photos, you can kind of change like how they look. So you can either hide and reorder, which means they kind of disappear, um, the ones that don't fit into that category, and then the, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. So the ones that don't fit in the category disappear and then the ones that do kind of all shuffle up to the top or you can just fade out the ones that don't fit in the category. I do like the hide and reorder. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, you can change where the filters are. So like where those little tabs are. I like them on the left because I think that's where people will look to find them. Now there are a few other things you can change in here, like your padding, the maximum width, and things like that. I'm going to leave all of that alone for now. As a side note, if you have videos, you can change um, how they play in here. All right. Um, oh, and one last thing. If you want people to be able to share something from your light box to Twitter or Facebook or Pinterest, you can turn that on on these settings as well. I'm going to leave those as off for now because I like a nice clean look. I'm going to click update options and then I'm just going to show you the colors really quick. These um, gray colors are the default and I just kind of leave them how they are. Um, and for most sites that works okay, but if you want to do something fun or funky, you can just, you know, change the colors in here and make it custom. Um, I'm going to leave those alone, but you do have all sorts of color and display options in this. If you want to add item attributes, you can. Um, it kind of depends on how you want your site set up. In this case, Emily is our only photographer, um, so I'm probably not going to go ahead and do that. But if you wanted to, you could um, add, let's see, I'll just show you how that looks. Um, we'll use a camera, we'll call it photographer and we'll click update options and I'll show you how that looks actually on the item page. All right, so now the next thing I wanna do is go to item categories. Now the reason I'm doing my categories first instead of as I go is because you don't actually have the option to add categories when you're adding an item. Um, it works pretty much just like adding post categories, um, but for some reason, you don't have the option to add a category when you're adding an item or, or add a new category when you're adding an item, although you can select a previously made one. So I'm going to go ahead and add the engage category. So I just type in the name. Um, I can change the slug if I want. So for example, if this was a longer um, name, say it was something like uh, mobile web design, I could maybe make that just, you know, mobile for the slug um, and that would show up in the URL. In this case, it's one word, so I'm just going to leave this blank and it will auto fill with the engaged as the slug. 
I'm gonna leave the rest of this alone and just click add new category. Now I can actually add items. So I can click add new item and I'll show you how easy this is. Now, as I said, it looks pretty much just like a post and it works pretty much just like a post. So that's great. Um, you can enter your title and I probably should have asked Emily um, whose site <laughs> I'm working on what the title should be. So for right now, I'm just gonna use a very fancy title like that. You can type in whatever text you want. Um, oh, that's a hex code, but I still had my cupcake Ipsum saved, but I don't. Um, so I'll just say, hello, here is text. My microphone's in front of my keyboard, it's a little hard to type. And then I can choose a category. And now, as I said before, so this is pretty much just like a post, but you know, on a post, you have the option to add a new category here and you don't have that um, on this for some reason. So just go ahead and select one of the ones that you already made, or you have to go back and create a new item category. All right, so now all we need to do is go down here and click set featured image. And we'll use one of this lovely lady sitting on the stairs. And while I'm here, I'm gonna pay attention to um, how the image looks. So we get to choose how the thumbnail is cropped. Um, in this case, I noticed that she's kind of in the bottom center of the photo. So I wanna make sure that that is selected. So let me show you, I click set featured image. And then on the thumbnail center above it, I can choose the bottom center. I may actually be okay with the center center on this one, but I'm not sure. Um, I can always come back and change this later, but I'm gonna go with the bottom center for now. But this is really useful in case you know you have um, a photo where somebody's like in the top left or in the bottom right or something like that. You can choose where the center should be for the thumbnail. All right, now we get to choose our item type. A static image means it's just an image that when you click on it, nothing happens. And that's not what we want. We want it to open in a light box. So I'm gonna select single image. I'm gonna leave the light box layout full width but I'm going to change the max height of the image to 600 pixels because that should fit on most people's screens. I don't want them to open the light box and this huge image you know, that goes down like 2000 pixels shows up and they can't see the whole thing at once. I want them to see the whole image. Now under the custom attributes, I already kind of pre-filled this. Sorry, I've gone back and forth a little bit tweaking things for the video so it makes sense. Um, but we have the photographer set and we have Emily Ryder. So, if you happen to have a site um, where maybe you had multiple photographers or maybe, um, for example, I do web development, so I have um, the attribute for the designer and for the developer. So I will show, you know, the designer was Holly Meyer and the developer was me. Um, but you can really kind of like customize these attributes to whatever works best for your website. Um, but they are kind of nice and handy and I'll show you how those look once we publish everything. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and click update. Um, that should have been published if this was the first time I was doing this, but I edited this a bit and went back and uh, reshot the video. So sorry, in your case, you'll have a publish button there right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and add another item um, real quick because until I put these in a grid and actually insert them on the page, you're not really gonna see how they look. So this one I will name two. Um, test. And in this case, I'm gonna click the lifestyles. I'm gonna give something for each category so you can see how things are sorted. I'm gonna set a featured image. Um, we'll go with this one. In this case, I'll just leave this thumbnail center in the actual center. But this time, I wanna choose images slider. Um, this is another one that I like to use um, on some of the websites I do. So the height, um, is related to its width. I think we'll leave that at 55% for now. Remember, we can come back and change anything that doesn't look quite right. You can choose a cropping method. I'm gonna click scale down. And I don't wanna autoplay the slideshow, though you may want to. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show the thumbnails. Um, and I'm gonna leave the rest of these alone for now. So now that we've got down to the bottom of the slider images, we can choose more um, to show up in our slider. So I'll just choose these next three. And then I'll go ahead and click publish on this one. 
I'm going to do one more um, under married. So I'll add a new item. And then three. I'll check the married box. I'll set a featured image. Use this pretty couple. In this case, I will choose the thumbnail center. The center center may be okay. I'm going to choose the top center. We'll see. And I'm just going to make this one a single image again as well. Again, I will set the uh, max height to 600 pixels so it fits on the screen. I'll go ahead and click publish on this one. And now I can actually build the grid. So we'll go to Grid Builder. And I have already made a portfolio grid or named one portfolio. If you have not made one yet, you can make one right here. I'll just show you. Um, I'll call it test. I click add and then it gives you the grid list and you just check the box next to the one that you want to do. I want to do the portfolio one and it will give you this page. So to add grid items, you can either choose by category. So per perhaps you wanted to just choose um, images that fell under engaged or maybe you wanted just ones for lifestyle. But in this case, it's my full, well not my full portfolio, it's Emily's full, full portfolio. So I'm going to select all. And then you get the drop down um, from the different options. So I'm just gonna go one, two, and three. Now you can auto set um, the size that they come out as, but I just kind of go with whatever the default is and then I play with them um, after adding them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add all of these. Now the thing that's kind of difficult is although you get this teeny tiny thumbnail up at the top, you can't really see the image. Um, so it's kind of a lot of back and forth and playing with things and seeing how um, you want things to display. But it's fairly simple. You can change the width and then the height. Um, so we'll make this one huge. No, let's not make it that big. Let's try a little bit smaller. And then we'll make the height. That's way too big. Way too big. Um, I'm really terrible at fractions, so please just ignore how bad I am at this. <laughs> Let's do that. Um, and that's probably not even remotely appropriate for that image. Um, remember, that's actually the one that's um, the lady sitting on the stairs. So we would actually want this to display maybe more like that. That would be better. Let's make this one mm, more like that because that one is a horizontal image. And then we'll just kind of make this one Oh, way too big. I'm sorry, I told you I'm terrible at this. We'll just do something like this. And of course, don't forget that you can drag and drop to rearrange um, images. I'm just gonna leave them how they are for now, but it's very simple um, if you just wanna move things around. We'll click Save Grid, and then we'll go over to her portfolio page and we'll see how that looks. All right, so her portfolio page currently doesn't have anything on it, so I'm gonna click Edit Page. Of course, if you haven't made a page yet, go ahead and do that. Now that we've installed the Media Grid, though, we do have this button right here at the top of the page. You just click on that, and you select your portfolio, or your gallery. Um, I made that test one that has nothing. The portfolio one is the one I want to add. You can choose whether you want titles under items or not. If not, um, when you hover over them, the titles will show. I do want to allow the filter. The filter is um, what gives us that nifty option to kind of shift between, um, you know, what category we want to see. So if we want to see the, all of the engaged photos or all of the wedding photos without seeing the others. So I'm going to click allow filter. Now you can hide the all filter if you want. Um, I want everything to display here, but maybe you wanted people to automatically land on the engaged photos. You could do that by saying yes and then um, it's just selecting the engaged here and then they would have to click the lifestyles tab or the married tab to see the others. I'm going to leave this alone for now. I'm just going to click insert grid. So it looks like this lovely little short code and we still can't see what's going on. So let's go ahead and click update and I'll show you how that looks. We can now view the page and here is our grid. So it's not super impressive with only three images but you can get an idea of how things are starting to look. Now when you hover over them, one difference you'll see is this has a camera showing as a single image 
and this actually has a slideshow. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through them and I'll show you what they look like. We can scroll to the next photo here. As you can see, we again have the max height. This one fills the width a little bit better and that's nice. If we'd put information down here, we would have it, but we don't. And then this one is the slideshow. It's gonna take a second, there we go. So this one actually opens as a slideshow that you can scroll between. Um, and I think that's really cool. For example, maybe you wanted to show, um, we'll call them Susie and Greg. You wanted to show Susie and Greg's wedding. You just had one thumbnail for them and you opened it. And then you could have um, an entire gallery of their wedding just based off that one thumbnail. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Um, and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna play with stuff a little bit more and show you how the gallery looks in just a second. All right, so I have gone ahead and played with this a bit. Um, so not to embarrass myself on video anymore with how terrible I am at fractions, um, I've kind of made this kind of grid layout, um, which I think I'm pretty happy with. I go to the portfolio page um, after clicking save grid and it looks something like this. Now, of course, I can still click on them and we can scroll through and here we have the photographer. This is Emily Ryder. And of course, you know, if we had, and I didn't set it that for everything, but you know, if we had um, multiple photographers or we wanted to include location on there um, as an item attribute, we could. And of course, there's room to put some really interesting information about the wedding, um, maybe about this lovely couple and their special day. Um, so it's really quite customizable. And it's nice that you can just kind of scroll through um, all of these different options and do a gallery um, of all sorts of different types of things. And of course, one of my favorite things is this little sorting feature. So if I wanna see all of the engaged photos I can, I don't think that's actually an engaged photo, I just kind of stuck it in there. I can see all of the married photos. Um, this may have actually been an engaged one. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just kind of like randomly selected things. And then all of the lifestyle ones, that's not a lifestyle photo, but you get the idea of how it works. And I think this is a really slick looking um, portfolio. And I'm really excited. Um, I use this on several websites, as I mentioned before, and I think it's a great option for a plugin. As you can see, it's fairly easy to use. The trickiest part is making all of those fractions uh, match up. So if you're bad with fractions like I am, it'll take you some trial and error. But otherwise, um, feel free to get this plugin, play around with it, and just have fun. Thanks for watching.